I hate line art and that is why I have spent the last three years learning how to draw without line art after spite. I'm sure you do too. I have learned so much about drawing and painting and I have failed so much in the process and in this video I'm going to show you the 5 bulletproof process of line artless painterly style in my artwork so that at the end of this video you will be able to go to your canvas and make insane line artless painting. Let's dive in. Uh, I enjoy drawing. It brings so much joy. Wait, what's that? Oh my lord! First, Have you ever wondered why we need line art? After all, you're most likely exposed to line art since you were a kid from those comic drawing and kid cartoon book. Well, line art exists to make things clean. There's clear separation between the subject and the background, or object within the subject like the clothing, arm, and sensor. So you can imagine what would happen when there's no line art. Your artwork become a mess of a dookie. Your artwork now blends with the background, colors falling everywhere, and it all just looks so messy, bro. We are gonna lose! Messy? Huh? Then so be it. You know, at this point, I don't care about some other bullshit. I'm gonna focus on what I like and I'm gonna improve on it regardless of whatever and we're gonna win this shit. So now we know the problems that we will face when we don't do line art is how to make our drawing sharp, contrasting and readable enough even though it's messy and I know just exactly how to do that. We are already at a big disadvantage if we don't use line art but we can still win this battle. Prepare your sketch. You can be as detailed as you want, but in the end, we are going to merge this sketch. Be prepared. But before we proceed, let's analyze my previous no line art artwork and see what makes the artwork look decent. This is Kiana. Say hi to YouTube. Hi. YouTube, this is Lina. Hello. So first, I want to address something. I lied. There is line art in this artwork. Now, before you lose trust in me and attack me in comment, I can't help it. Look at this part of the image. When I turn it black and white, you can see the arm clearly separated from the background. The background is white and the arm is dark. But look at this part of the hair that got hit by light. It's the same brightness as the background. If I don't give a line, that part of the hair will disappear. This one too, it's almost the same brightness as the background. This one too, this one too. But notice this one. I don't do fully line. I just put some short stroke in the part that blends with the background. Now, it gives you notification, huh? I mean, signs that says the shoulder ends here. Or look at this part of the arm. It's literally the same color as the shirt. Which, I'm not gonna lie, it gives a sense of unity and cohesiveness of the color. And we can just give it a bit of line so that we can still read clearly that this is where the arm ends. And I'm guilty of this in every line artless painting every I made. Every painting painting. Oh no, there he is again! Quick, we must finish the painting before the algorithm catches up to us. I know what I want to draw. It's Freerin kneeling and praying to God. Okay, let's focus on the more important thing in this artwork, on how do we choose the color. I'm sure you have started a new sketch and looking at it thinking, what am I supposed to color it with? Stop! Stop thinking of color as color. Think of it as a mood. What emotion do you want to convey? What kind of feeling? Don't choose light pink because it's light pink. Choose it because you want to convey a dreamy and heavenly feel to a piece. There is a story in your artwork that you want and need to convey to anyone seeing. But when I do that as a background, keep in mind that I have to color the subject darker so it separates clearly without line art. And that is why you will see the hair is really dark when by doing that, we outline the face using dark hair, contrasting the background. That is why this piece is so readable even without line art. Freerin, kneeling, I want it to be kind of sad, but with glimpses of hope, so there will be dark color, but also a warm color lighting bouncing off yellow reddish color in the cheeks while she pray. I do not know how this will end up, nor whether it will turn out good or not, but I don't give a fuck. Let's do this.
Did you see that? Everything we've just learned, put into practice, you know? Let's see what we did good and what we could improve better. First thing first, we use reference, which is the best thing we did. Here is the name of the artist we reference. This one is AI, by the way. In before, we want these qualities in our artwork. Let's turn the color black and white and see how the artwork performs. From far away, it's readable, so that's good. It's nice that she has white hair, so it will contrast the dark background nicely. There could be more contrast here in the arm, but I like how the white look, so let's just add a line R to define it. The hands, however, needs further definition because I can't see shit. At first, the face is kind of flat, and this is too elongated. But just by adding a lighter part here, now the face look more three-dimensional. It don't look elongated now. At orange around the light, it's called subsurface talk in terms of emotion and story. We want to add it to make the face more alive. Further add some orange secondary lighting on the right side to pop the subject and it will still look balanced. This painting is basically done and we just need rendering. The final thing to do is just clean things up and render it up. You know what? Comment render tender on comment section and I will make next video topic about rendering. And this is how the final painting looks like. Okay, we lost. Not surprising. But you know what's surprising? This artwork is becoming wallpaper, baby! Let's go! Check out wallpaper of this artwork and other artwork. Also, free parts back there on Gumroad. It would help the channel a lot. Bye.